I'm Karen Lauritsen. I'm the program representative in the Design Communication Arts program at UCLA Extension. And joining me today is Masaki Koike, who is an instructor with our program and who recently won a Grammy for Special Edition Box Set, mm -hmm. What It Is, Funky Soul and Rare Grooves, 1967 to 1977. Right. How, how is that for you? Very interesting. The, the project took about six months to complete um, from wow. the very first core meeting to final execution and printing and it was such an interesting project. Probably the most interesting one since I started at Rhino uh, and I was there for four years. Mm -hmm. um, but from the very beginning the product managers um, were so enthusiastic about this release. So listening to the musicians was a big part of yeah. how you found your design inspiration. It's interesting because this music is, uh, it's not like the overproduced, like mm -hmm. typical, you know, 60s, 70s R&B, soul and funk music, like the Spinners or the OJs. Uh, these, these groups basically had like one single, like on a 45, mm -hmm. or some of them at least. And uh, it's very underproduced and it's almost like street corner music. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of led to the concept of, you know, what if it was packaged in a chipboard box? Mm -hmm. And what if it was screen printed? A little bit more boutique style, mm -hmm. not so polished. Um, and uh, in the beginning, it took some convincing because a lot of the people, especially the marketing people, were a little hesitant about selling a box for, I think it retails for $55, $50. Um, but I think because of the deadline, they kind of trusted me and just said, you know, just run with it and go for it and let's see what happens. And uh, it's great that they actually went for it and they trusted my vision and uh, it just really snapped together from there. Mm -hmm. So what exactly was your role like from beginning to end? My role was basically just like any of the projects I worked on at Rhino. They basically, you know, tell me what's coming up in the schedule and then they let me run with it. I have meetings, I have kind of verbal meetings with like, you know, the people involved with the project. So basically we met, uh, they give you like an outline of all the artists and it, they give me the title and it just takes off from there. And I just present like a few ideas that I have and then they, they decide whether it's good or bad, whether it's marketable or not. So when you're teaching at UCLA Extension, you taught design fundamentals, I think, in the fall quarter. Yeah. Um, what, what do your students want to know most? Like, are they interested in how you got started in design? Yeah, I try to mix it up quite a bit. Um, I think because uh, at that point, there's such a, an infant stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I always try to kind of give them everything, like, you know, my personal experience, but um, I also try to mix it in with, like, other friends that I have that have, you know, succeeded and have not succeeded. I always try to keep it interesting for them because I figured each person is going to be different in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I kind of took it literally when, you, when it's design fundamentals. I mean, to me, it's kind of like I'm teaching them the way I wish I was taught in many ways because I went to a Cal State system and they're pretty much, you know, so on the mechanical side of it and the production side of it of like, you know, here's Photoshop, here's Illustrator, here's Quark, get to work. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't really t teach you about the principles of design and the, f the true meaning of fundamentals of graphic design. Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to instill that into the students as much as I can. You know, we're not designing CD packaging, we're not doing movie posters, we're not doing any entertainment related stuff. Um, we don't really get into that too much. I think it's more about spatial um, understanding about, um, you know, um, you know, responding to what you see as far as the photo, to like how that juxtaposes next to a symbol, or like how the typography works with imagery. Mm -hmm. um, it's all kind of this relationship kind of study. And being able to see, just by driving down the street, what the new AT&T campaign looks like, what the new Burger King ca campaign looks like. 
um, I think it's all out there, especially mm -hmm. living here. It's so mm -hmm. concentrated. Yeah. Everybody's just throwing information it's at you. In our face. You don't need to buy, you know, the big book of logos. I really don't <laughs> think it's necessary. Yeah. I think it's more of, of understanding, like, what's around you. So, uh -huh. what do you want uh, students to get at the end of the 12 weeks? Uh, I think the ultimate goal is for students to develop a better eye over the 12 week period to kind of go from just looking but not actually interpreting and at the end of the 12 weeks I hope that um, they become more opinionated about like how bad a lot of the advertising is in LA especially and um, you know so that they can begin to formulate like their ideas and their concepts mm -hmm. um, and to understand like what works what doesn't work because I think that's the fundamental skill. Mm -hmm. Every week I have them uh, bring in a research assignment where uh, they bring in like an advertisement or they bring in um, a website or a business card or a logo and we all kind of critique it all together and it's pretty interesting how it all works. Um, it's not a coincidence that we all agree that the 76 logo is a really nice mark. Mm -hmm. um, it's not you know, a coincidence that everybody likes the IBM logo. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting because one of the assignments, the research assignments was to bring in an illustration. And one, you know, you always bring in one that you like and one that you don't like. And about four or five people brought in um, Thomas Kincaid. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody just would, wouldn't stop bashing him. Yeah. And nobody defended the guy. Yeah. Um, and a few people brought in the Apple ad. Mm -hmm. And everybody pretty much agrees that mm -hmm. that is a nice advertisement for the iPod, you know. And I remember that um, the meeting that I observed when you had the 76 logo up there and you played with the different, yeah. do you call them components, I don't know, with the color. Like yeah. you changed the color, the two colors, and then you changed the font on the 76 and just like just tweaking these tiny little elements. Yeah. And I remember I was like, hmm. And the students seemed really amazed that it just took this tiny little right. turn to make it all wrong. Yeah, I tried to do it flipped upside down so it looked like it said 9L. Uh, I changed the colors, I changed the font. Uh, because I think, you know, people dumb down simplicity and I'm trying to show them that if you, the slightest adjustment to like the, this simple mark mm -hmm. uh, can throw the whole thing off, mm -hmm. you know. So it gives them a better understanding to pay attention to the little nuances mm -hmm. and the details because that's where it all is. So, someone who goes through the Design Communication Arts Certificate Program at UC Lake Extension, what kind of design work do you think is out there for them? What kind of things can they look forward to doing? Well, I think the graphic design field, it's pretty broad now. Um, there's multimedia, there's you know, interactive, there's websites, there's print design, there's of course then the different industries of like, you know, the music industry, the movie poster industry, uh, that kind of all fall into the, to the entertainment industry um, umbrella, uh, DVD menus, DVD packaging, video game packaging. Mm -hmm. Then there's also like the advertising aspect of it, of doing, you know, commercials for like Nissan or Infiniti or... So you're meeting students at the very beginning of the program in Design Fundamentals, which mm -hmm. we recommend to be the first course they take. What do you think is important for them to keep in mind as they continue through the Design Communication Arts program? I want them to remember uh, that just because you're in this art field doesn't mean that you can be naive to everything. It doesn't mean that you could be you know, lazy or it's an easier kind of field to get into because it's quite the opposite. Um, it's a constant learning process. You can't be lazy. I always tell people it's like being a police officer. You're in uniform, whether you're in uniform or out of the uniform, you always have to watch your back. Uh, graphic designers always have to pay attention. There's no, to be good, you know, you have to have interest and you have to have kind of the overall understanding of like being aware, whether you're watching a movie or a TV or whether you're in the bookstore or you're shopping, you, you should always be paying attention to that, you know? So how do you keep the flame burning personally? Does wood cutting? Uh, that. Well, I, I, I haven't been getting into woodworking. Uh, I, I kind of pay attention to architecture as well as, you know, typography. I mean, there's so many things that kind of keep me going, friends. There's always kind of this hope mm -hmm. that you're going to make a difference or you're going to do something interesting, you know, with your life or your career. 
but it's just the satisfaction of creating is I think the ultimate thing that keeps you burning, you know, that keeps you going, like just you want to kind of see it uh, finished. Um, but for me, I guess too, it's the process of, of design. That's like the most kind of appealing aspect of it. Thank you for coming and talking with us. And congratulations on your two Grammy nominations and your big win. It's really awesome. And uh, the students are going to be lucky to have you in the spring. So I look forward to working with you again then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Great experience. Cool.